Hi, y'all. So have you heard the news? And by the news, I mean actually the news. They have mentioned that Antifa is not uh, God's anointed representative on the planet who only is bringing love and light to the oppressed peoples of the world. Like, I am told, allegedly, that Antifa occasionally might have members that somehow or other wind up committing acts of violence. And I was shocked to hear it because I had no earthly idea that this uh, had gone on because all I had heard about it beforehand was what I'd seen, you know, in video clips. Nothing whatever to do with what you heard about on the media, about how all oh, these are just protesters. Now, a lot of, every, uh, pretty much everything about the subject now has been said, but not everyone has said it, and that's why I'm here, so welcome. Uh, people talk about this as a welcome change, and uh, I'm glad to see the media is catching up, even if accidentally, and they're speculating about why this is. It's always the escalation of violence. I don't think that is really it. Because if you recall, after Trump was elected, the media would point, you know, they would show a clip of people, uh, you know, arsonists, misdemeanors, uh, felons, uh, arsonists and whatnot, and they'd say, oh, look at these protesters. Those aren't protesters. Those are thugs. Those are criminals. They are violent. They are committing, you know, very egregious felonies. Not protesting. Protesting tends to be a bit noisy, quite a bit rowdy, but it's with words and uh, you know, maybe some hand gestures and waving sometimes with all five fingers, I'm told, allegedly. Rumor has it, possibly. Um, they will sit there and look at that and then just deny that uh, anything really is going on. And then, you know, one guy drives into a crowd, kills someone, and suddenly uh, they're able to spot that, oh, look at this, there is there is criminal behavior afoot. And, uh, you know, obviously the president didn't handle it correctly because while condemning violence, he didn't use the the incantation that the media wanted him to use while denouncing violence. Apparently it's no longer sufficient to say, I denounce violence from all the groups. But anyway, a couple of years ago, I was watching some stuff on the Klan, because I like to keep up on crazy people. And there was a, in somewhere in North Carolina, to call this a rally would be a bit of an overstatement. There were a couple of sad bastards in some funny outfits with their goofy hats and the silly boots and strings and whatnot who showed up to say rude things. And a whole bunch of people decided to show up and say rude things back and they brought uh, noisemakers. And the camera crew is going around, the news folks are going around interviewing people and they're talking to this one woman. And she's like, you know, uh, in this perfectly reasonable position, you don't get to come here in our town and, and spew hate without uh, us coming out and having a few words to say back to you. Perfectly reasonable, perfectly civilized, uh, way to handle things. And the uh, interviewers prompting her, trying to, you know, I guess, get all the angst and anger you can out of it. And this woman's just, you know, she's pretty much all smiles. And so the uh, newscaster asks her, aren't you surprised this is going on? She said, mm, not really. Crazy lives everywhere. I agree with that. Crazy lives everywhere. But all these people of color uh, could show up and stand there in front of, you know, various neo-Nazi groups, various clans gr uh, clan groups, and just sit there and laugh at them and mock them uh, without any real fear of violence uh, coming back their way. And the reason they can do that is the same reason that um, here is a clip of a Klan's member talking about uh, economics. Uh, so, um, well, I'll just have something to say about it when he gets finished. finished. Uh, take it away, Mr. Wizard Man. While white Americans are having a hard time keeping the lights on above their heads and food on the table, for their families. While the unemployment rate in America keeps skyrocketing and going up, we still have immigrants flooding our borders by the millions. Our government is saying there's nothing they can do, that it's too big of a problem that they can't help white Americans or black Americans regardless of what color. This is a problem facing both races. White flower. The reason they can do that is the same reason that this guy is talking about how the uh, immigration policy is hurting whites and blacks. It's bad for both races. He has to talk that way to get uh, anyone to take him even remotely seriously in this day and age. Um, and that's because the Klan has been crushed underfoot so well and so thoroughly by public scorn, ridicule, these types of things, and action by, the, by law enforcement and, uh, and by the government to go in uh, to put down them when they were getting by. And by put them down, I don't mean to say, you know, stop doing that, you big poopy head. I mean, you know, sitting in men with guns and saying, you are not going to do this here, or if you do, 
you're going to get hurt in the process. It's in your best interest to uh, speak your mind very peacefully. And this is in a time when you had law enforcement at the state and local level who would cooperate with the Klan and, and um, say, you know, oh, the agitators of Freedom Writers, for example, are coming down. They're going to be here about half past one. Uh, you've got until quarter of two before we show up. And if anything bad happens, well, we won't be here to see it now, will we? And you, fa you fa uh, fast forward to today and what is happening. Um, well, you have states like the one I just mentioned, North Carolina, where black folks can go out and mock the Klan members who are saying they're silly shit in public, dressed in their funny little outfits, because uh, you have their law enforcement that actually does its job, enforces the law, or at least you did a couple of years ago. A completely different situation in California where the law enforcement run, oh my god, there's violence, run! Run for your pension! Run! Save yourselves! Union! You know, that kind of shit. And the higher-ups are saying things, you know, essentially the heckler's veto, which should be renamed the domestic terrorist's veto, quite frankly. Um, you can't have your speech here, because if you say these things, uh, the Antifa people are so uh, weak-minded and intellectually vacuous and mentally vacant that the only thing that could possibly happen when they get provoked is they have to engage in violence. And since you're going to say something and they'll be provoked, they won't necessarily have to engage in violence, and therefore you need to go away. Does not compute, um, and it's because the uh, I mean, the state officials and local officials there aren't doing what they should be doing with respect to Antifa. Uh, that's in large part because not the the pressure that was put on the Klan in during the uh, civil rights era, and when those pictures started go, started going out around the world, the uh, government had no choice but to start dealing with. It. When you were watching uh, police dogs being sicked on children, you were watching people uh, have their skin peeled off by the, uh, the use of fire hoses. You know, have a lot of pressure and it can actually deflesh parts of your body, uh, which is probably very painful. And those images go out, and there was outrage. And so the administration had to do something. And the media, quite properly then, was uh, shining a light on this and speaking truth to power and saying, you need to get on this. This is, uh, this is unconscionable. We are going around the world talking about all the great, uh, the great wonderful thing that America is and we bring freedom and prosperity, and yet look at what is happening in our own backyard. This cannot stand. And we know how that worked out. Well, until about 35 seconds ago, the media's like, oh, uh, you know, oh, maybe one or two people, you know, from the outside showed up and something bad happened. But no, 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 no. But, you know, if one guy gets in a car and runs someone over, oh, everyone there is responsible. And Mr. President, don't you dare acknowledge the reality that uh, when you look at a crowd that is that large, you will have an assembly of people, some of whom will be the evil racists, one of whom was the murderer. On the other side, you'll have a, well, a different kind of evil racists, but those are our, our preferred kind of evil racists, so you know, don't say anything bad about them. Don't you dare. And you will have uh, some people who are on the fence, and then you have another group of people uh, who just show up to see what's going on. They're there for the amusement, the entertainment value. So you'll have good people, you'll have different shades of bad, and, oh, by the way, in the crowd, uh, you will have cops, which I know if you're far left, that's those are the evil people, too. So I know I'm not talking your language there. I'm sorry about that. But they're there uh, to, to keep an eye on things. Note, this is back in states where they uh, enforce laws like they used to do a few years ago. Not California and not lar uh, you know, other parts of the country uh, in, in America in 2017, which is, for those of you who don't know, the current year. And, uh, you know, so anyway, in this, uh, during the Civil Rights era, you'd have U.S. Marshals, uh, you'd have uh, military troops were sent in when necessary to uh, straighten things out. And I'm wondering, well, we have seen what the Berkeley Police Department's going to do. Absolutely nothing. Uh, we have seen what, uh, what is going to happen in these places when Antifa shows up. And even when there are no neo-Nazis or uh, white supremacists, at least not that anybody can identify, the violence doesn't stop. Um, why is it that the FBI and the U.S. Marshals are not crawling up everybody's ass crack there? Why does California not have so many federal agent badges shoved up its ass? It's going to be shitting those badges for the next decade. I wonder silently aloud to myself, how can this possibly be? You know, Mr. Mr. Trump talks a great game about we're going to knock the terrorists on their ass, talking about ISIS. We have our very own terrorists here, Mr. President. How about if you, you know, I don't know, spend a stray moment directing your Justice Department to go do something about that. How about we start knocking these terrorists on their asses until they get it through their heads, the same way the Klan finally got it through their heads. You are perfectly free to come out and say whatever vile thing you want. You raise a hand, and it is game on. And we promise you, your little group of thugs, 30 or 40 people, 
are not going to be able to handle what it is we're going to bring. We are going to bring the pain and it is going to hurt and it is going to hurt until you finally learn your lesson. But uh, no, none of that. There is, however, um, a little pet theory of mine about why it is the media is getting interested in this now. It's not because the neo-Nazis aren't there and the violence still happens. I think what it is is that journalists more and more are now getting the shit knocked out of them. And so now, uh, when they're no longer sitting in their little gated communities where they pontificate about how guns are so evil and should be taken away from the law-abiding citizens or it should be much more difficult for the law-abiding citizen to get them, uh, you know, the people who have to live near these types of thugs and defend themselves against these types of thugs about whom the media really care nothing, they don't care, they don't care about uh, the normal person one whit, uh, because the violence happens there, not here. If it bleeds, it leads. If it bleeds, it leads. You are just a story for us. The more of you who are run over, shot, stabbed, beaten, raped, that is just money in my bank account. I'm going to cry all the way to the bank for the bad thing that's happened to you while I go home to my nice, home, my nice house in a gated community where I'm safe and protected from having to deal with the rattle of the world. Well, now they're the ones getting knocked around, too. And I think you're going to start to see more pushback when they start to realize, oh, our partners here, the people with whom we are ideologically aligned on many issues, are now slapping the shit out of us. Wait a second, Fluffy. We've got to draw a line somewhere, and I think I have just found it. I have discovered that all of my life I have had these principles I've never even had to use before until now. Mirabile dictu. And then there is one other shining light at the end of the tunnel, and it's that the Berkeley University has a new uh, president who is apparently going to take free speech seriously and um, has said we are not canceling these events for these you know, the, the wrong thinkers, Milo Yiannopoulos, Ben Shapiro, uh, and, and Coulter. And anyone uh, engaging in violence will be dealt with. Well, I welcome that. And I uh, particularly welcome that, given the um, kind of management that the, uh, the poor city of Berkeley is currently under. All right, so that's my take on the recent events with respect to Antifa and the parallels to other terrorist organizations uh, we've had to deal with in the past. And what I think we should do with this one uh, as has been shown to be effective with the ones we've had to deal with in the past. All right, have a great day.